G look closer to our finalists from Copenhagen, or are they actually for real? Forsaken getting pushed away by the drone. Start moves off, but it's smoky. Early aggression. How do you come up with two? And he wants a bit more. Fight still being taken, but that's going to be the right click and play. Chichu eventually dealing with him. A nice and easy trade. Smoggy is a pistol demon. He did the same thing in round one of Pearl. Ran forwards, got two kills, three kills, in fact, on Pearl. Instantly with the ghost. At this point, two players remaining. Left scrambling a little bit, I think. If you are paper as you can see, Benkai now forced to free clear out through Kitchen. Watching for that mid push because A's been compromised for quite some time. And look at how good EDG have been at pumping the brakes when they get into a man advantage situation on the attack side. They did it on Pearl. They're doing it again here as well. Just take a moment, pause, make the Paper X defenders spread out around the map. It'll set you up better. A lot of damage done at the end of the day, but the kills returned for EDG. And it's another great pistol round unless Mind Freak can pull off a 1v4. It just doesn't seem doable. Maybe if Haldon gives him a fight. Yeah, not quite. Intelligent play, isn't it? Just a quick little peek. Jiggle for the info. Now crossfire setup, so. And of course, Mind Freak worried that these players are just baiting him. Worried about a flank coming through. Kang Kang is there, but a long way away. And nobody's good for it. Shuts down both of those stragglers left alive. And smoggy in the pistol round again, Josh, like you mentioned. Yeah. I went uh, crazy with it in terms of the pistols. And I, I, honestly, getting off to a nice early lead, something to get the momentum going for you, for Edward Gaming, I think bodes well in this map. It definitely, absolutely does. The lack of life, I thought, was going to hurt them on this map because life is their jet player. Smoggy hasn't really been playing jet recently. No. They don't have the same agent pools, at least on face value. But Smoggy looked pretty good there just on the pistol. Not that not that it required too much of you know, the, the jet play style. Sure, that prowess, not really being flexed, really, but still, shots were found. Kills are kills at the end of the day, aren't they? Yeah, and they have bought into this one with two rifles. You can see that Kang Kang and Smoggy do have that in play. That's one of the headhunter bullets, just not taken out in a double swing. Bit of running gun, obviously, in play there when you got the Spectres. At this point, it's about making sure that you don't lose anybody else if you are Edward Gaming. Bike yeah, you want to try and keep this as clean as you possibly can. Hard on. Oh, no, the pistol. Yeah, I mean, Shooting the body. You are literally reloading, son, because of that. Uh, that is bad manners costing you your life. Okay, Kang Kang still got it under control. They're not getting punished for it, particularly. And Haldong, of course, only losing a ghost, not too bad. But I think that shows there's a friendly rivalry going on here within the APAC. Head to head. And these two teams. You might think as well, being from roughly the same region, they might be practice partners. They actually haven't played each other in quite some time. And I don't want to get it wrong. These guys don't have beef with each other. I mean, Kang Kang was talking about how much he respected Paper X coming into the tournament. Said it was uh, getting uh, Paper X getting to the finals of Copenhagen. He said, as an Asian, it was an achievement that made me feel extremely proud. There'll be a lot of pressure and nerves for us to meet such a strong team for our LAN debut. I mean, you can tell that Kang Kang really does respect what Paper X have done in the past, respect yeah. the players as well, but always time for a cheeky... Uh, sure, a bit of confidence. Bit you know. of body shooting. Show that you're not scared them. of the finalists. Exactly. It just helps remove all the nerves, doesn't it? I think a conversion here of this bonus round for EDG would be fantastic. Because again, bring up the same question that we did at the very beginning as well. Was the first map close just because of Pearl, because of that unknown quantity, or can they do it on a map that Paper X are particularly good at. Jing is very aggressive up here on A, but it looks like the spike is heading over towards B. Paper X are very familiar with this kind of play, but Forsaken making some noise here, and there's two EDG players. Taking a lot of damage, but the angle's still being watched. Baited in. Yeah. And that's a nice player advantage to be able to cook up. Haldong still left behind on what is going to become a strange late lurk. And on the other side of the map, despite not having many players here, Paper X have still denied the plan. Oh, that is unlucky for Mind Freak. And I love this proactivity. Already taken the back of the side as well, pushing right past their own Viper Wall here. Risks are being taken. And they are being rewarded for it. Eventually, though, that is going to be the trade. You can see the Jing was able to catch that one, and Chi Chu well caught with a Util out in his hands.
But not getting the plant down has cost EDG here. How long is on the latest look of his life? Yeah. He spent all of that time, Bren, just trying to pick up a phantom. And not enough time left in this round to really do too much more. Left. It's gonna be the double face. Easily dealt with, and it was looking so good, honestly. I thought for a moment, the game plan from Edward Game was to try and fight them in their spawn, you know, push past that Viper yeah. wall. But it was only nobody that yeah. pushed through. It might have been great as a coordinated attempt. And, and listen, it's still a decent bonus round. They take two away. Uh, here's the replay. Divide just being able to pick up those stragglers as they kind of just contested one at a time. Wasn't particularly coordinated once they fought at the end of that round. But EDG, like I said, it was still a bonus round. They've got five rifles coming into this. So now we get to see possibly just a single coordinated A push. The Viper Wall going down at the beginning. Not destroyed. You have to expect that somebody's pushed. When that goes down, kills are being found, though. And yep, there you go. Dealt with. <laughs> we'll jump up there onto the box. Gives Kang Kang the angle. And if you were wondering at the beginning of this game, were Forsaken and Jing just going to run over EDG? There's a round for you that answers the question. Taken down instantly by their counterparts, Kang Kang and in this match, Smoggy. And I love the fact that they just pump the brakes every time that they get a player advantage. Yeah. I yeah. think there is so many new teams to the global stage that will push an advantage as soon as they get it without taking a moment to breathe. Not willing to slow it down. Not Never willing to slow it down. And that really was a concern for me with EDG, judging by how that aggressive their players are. Yeah, that's how they played. But I think, they LCQ. I think they're looking good here. They're just making sure that every advantage gets converted. And it was said as well, before it was rumored, it was said in the interview that we saw prior as well that EDG really did get tested as well by teams the likes of Exet, Optic. In scrims, yeah. Yeah, pushed them to improve. They've made radical improvements in that short amount of time that they have been here. And they said they knew what the next step of their game plan would be. I think we're seeing it right here. I think here. we're seeing it. Because there hasn't been this nuance before. When you watch their online games, if you are a fan of, of EDG, if you're watching that East Asia LCQ, you are seeing a step up, I think. Not. Yeah, I Despite the fact that they're playing with us up. Yeah, that's the impressive part, isn't it? And Paper X just forced to save in this round. Haodong had a lurk play going, actually, uh, up towards the top of tube. He just never got an opportunity to, to go for anybody. And now takes a peek into Divine and goes down. But that same kind of lurk play up through yeah. tube could be a possibility. Look at how Smoggy just jiggle peeks that and is instantly looking for the player supporting Jin. This showcases to me that they understand how the top teams in the world are going to play. It's so easy for a team to forget that there's always going to be someone ready to support Jing. Ready to bail them out. But just noticing that there's going to be a trap there and being aware of where the player's going to peek from, I think that speaks very highly to how Smoggy and the rest of EDG are actually thinking about breaking apart these defensive setups. And it's another really good start to a match for EDG. A cloud burst onto the recon. Does avoid all of that one and a dash back. But just before Forsaken collects that kill onto Kang Kang. And it's still A aggression from Paper X, but it's much more proactive. Forsaken drop down to one health. Folks that have been watching as well, just that, that mid approach. How and that was playing there a lot. Yeah, that was hard on on the lurk. Last time he went up tube, this time oh, underneath. And how does Smoggy and nobody play this? Take flight. That's the question. Dangerous position to drone from. It's only Smoggy watching. It really now is. Smoggy trying to work off the back of the drone. But entirely doable, I think. Position is known. They know it. The bottom side of tube here. Nobody. Back through. Recon's gonna be really in the wall. Bagged him. That's. Oh my goodness. What a play. And nobody has been elite in the online stage, but now a mighty task ahead of him. One bullet's left. That prowler just about latching onto his heels. 30 seconds remaining. Players are low. 30 seconds. Let's try and isolate a fight on both of them. A single bullet will do it. A single whiff, a, a, a breath onto Benkai and Forsaken would take them down. And look at this play, at the back of his mind. He has shown phenomenal gain sense and mechanical ability. He contact plays towards A. Here's the footsteps, 10, 10 seconds remaining. Seconds no need for a headshot, but delivers it anyway. And he has his ult to play off, a shock dart, a recon dart. Nobody is so intelligent in these situations. And he is outplaying Paper X right now. It's down to this. Forsaken versus the newcomer to the stage. And on a 
honestly. Just the slightest bit of damage will do it. It's all about timing here. It's all about timing. Back to back. Where are the players playing? Up the ropes. I don't believe it. And a shot is found. An ace to clutch it through. Welcome to champs. What a play. Nobody, this is his map. This is his playground. His solver here is phenomenal. Managing to pick off Jing to start things out. Grabs the kill on Devai as well. And then this masterful clutch. Sure, on two players with barely a shred of health, but... The way he played around the map was second to none. Yeah. And Paper X forced to take a timeout once more, very, very early in the map. EDG are getting off to hot starts. And Paper X are forced to adapt. Brent, they've thrown... They've thrown an aggressive set. One of the stats that jumped out to me, actually, about nobody, out of the, what do we have, 80 players in the tournament or something? Yeah. He's in the seventh place for damage per duel. He, he's outputting huge amounts of damage even when he loses duels against players. His aim is fantastic and he takes such smart fights. Able to put his team in positions to succeed. A bit of that early aggression. Fast control of B main. Warp going to be propped up. In fact, Mind Freak's even playing inside of this one. But the spam might do the trick on the half by here with the Stinger in play. Oh, Pops over a, the top of it. His orb is going down. Play. He is isolated, but still gets away with it. Just the one on the Forsaken's got the knives. How do you not get punished there? How the wall over the top. This angle slightly ajar. It's going to be able to find this one, but now the Hunter's Fury to try and supplement it. Pushes it through. Nobody just pre firing at all the different angles. And he gets the damage, creates the space, that late load from Haodong, enough to secure it. And that's another gorgeous set play that EDG are going to run. Uh, nobody wants more, setting up space for the rest of his team as Haodong goes for a lurk. There is thought behind the play here, for sure. Because look at, look at the chaos that's created within the Paper X ranks, as they had a four stack. Yeah. Waiting to collect all five players at that point. Every burst of the Hunter's Fury using to clear an angle. Push the players into Haodong. And EDG actually look a little bit uh, uncoordinated in terms of how they're getting the spike down on B, but they're being able to create enough pressure in mid that that doesn't matter. Paper X are being asked some serious questions right now, but with guns back in hands, Jing opting for a more passive approach to the A defense. I think they've spotted where he's hiding, though. They suspect this one, I think down portions of the wall. This is where Jing is in a lot of trouble. He's isolated. With shots like this, Kang Hang is leading the charge for his team. He always is. With a res in play though, a bit of disrespect being shown, but that's off the back of these footsteps that are being heard. Straight through mid now into orange. It's up to Mind Freak. What can he lock down? Is this angle going to be cleared? Updraft over the top. Information gathered. What not sure if he looked down or not, but he actually did spot out the one player. The discipline was there. What a beautiful clear that was. I mean, that was so well played from Smoggy and Hardong, Hardong in particular. And now Paper X put in a horrible position to try and clear this. A crossfire in Kitchen. Just pinched on, isn't it? Yeah, ripping the them. to play. Don't know whether that's quite a verb, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all down to Defy and Forsaken. These rounds have been magic from Edward Gaming. I just have to save these rifles. Fucking away. Almost. I don't think so. Okay. They will get away with a couple of the weapons, but... 
th this economic damage that they're doing to EDG doesn't really matter. Oh, look at the bank. The death from Devai is more important than any of it. Paperex managed to save a single operator, but no opportunity to get rounds on the board. And Bren, I think already our question has been answered. If we came into map two thinking, was it just Pearl that made EDG look close to our grand finals to Copenhagen? Nah, not at all. Not the case. Not the case. I don't want to carry it away a lead like this. Even if EDG have a comeback and are able to win the map, similar to Pearl, EDG, I think, have already showcased that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best. And I don't know whether they're going to be able to pull off comebacks like that repeatedly. No noise cues, though. This is a lot of aggression, including that haunt. Could be a watch prowler over the top. Got to suspect it. Got to know that the players are there. Indeed, the players are made forsaken. No cloud burst in play. Can't cover his tracks. Caught. Spike going down. All of the players from Paper X on the other side of the map as well. Haldong looking to pick people up. Aggressive play is being made. The off angle, though, what? You have got to be joking. I mean, that is a really nice play. Teleport's Just ready. flooding players into Haldong there allows them to get rifles oh, back. Whoa! Divide! There's no way. There's no shot. You can't be whiffing this one! Still collects the kill. Down to Mind Freak. He Noise has, bait. Has a Viper's Pit. Yeah. Suspected he might be. Top there with a bit of a tap there. Now on to the spike, but this is going to be the late look. Straight through into mid. That's Chichu. Watching all the potential angles. Seven rounds now. Fairwood Gaming. These guys are so in control right now. Their own destiny. Obviously, the stakes here. Early days in the group stage. Our first match of Champs 2022. But these guys are here to play. Yeah, ADG are looking excellent. I think, you know, there's a couple of moments there where Paper X might be able to get back into the round. But look, look at the scoreboard. EDG are 7-1 up, and they've been able to, to win these anti-eco rounds. It's not like they're giving Paper X opportunities that are being capitalized on. Op the op. Out of play here as Kankang takes it up towards Belt. And that is going to be the first kill found. What an impeccable one at that. No Mind Freak. Here. No Viper utility to try and block off 410. Or any sort of aggressive play that might come into way, and you can see there's pace. Once more being injected behind this one. Just trying to clear out Maze, but I don't expect that Jing could be up top here. Viper's Pit is dropped down, though, so these angles are not going to be quite as clear. Jing wants to try and drop down into them anyway. Wants to take the fight, but somehow, some way, Haodong once more comes through. That is a spectacular round again from Haodong. He's a master inside the Viper's Pit. He just can't be stopped. How is he getting this much value, man? He's using a Vandal in it as well. <laughs> All the traces revealing his positioning. But he, it doesn't matter because every shot's a headshot yeah, for Haldon. Just robotic in terms of aim. Look at this guy. Yeah. He looks fantastic inside there. And, and honestly, Brent, when I've been watching Edward Gaming, I would tell you Haldon is probably their weakest mechanical player. Sure. Maybe Chichu, but their weakest mechanical player is still better than uh, maybe a third of the players in the tournament. Yeah. EDG's skill was never never in question. This is a stacked roster coming out of China. That's and Haodong right now, 11 and five. I mean, put the, uh, both Haodong and Chichu have found moments to put the team on their back. Haodong with his IGLing, with his performance, with his ults, Chichu with the clutches on map one. It's been an all round effort. And EDG are running away with things here. Forcing another timeout here out of Paper X. Brent, what would this match have looked like? With a full roster. Life was playing. What I mean, on earth? I, obviously, never a question that, well, maybe we'll get the answer later in the tournament, actually. But for now, purely speculation. But this should be, in theory, a weakened version of EDG. Yeah. Who knows how much time Smoggy's had to practice with them. Of course, listed as a sub and traveled with them to Istanbul. So they must have been somewhat prepared to run him. But this is spectacular. Just for context, EDG are putting the hurt on Paper X more so than even FPX did in the finals. Oh, yeah. You know? That, this is this is a world-class performance coming out from EDG right now. And those were the questions we had for this team. How are they going to be competing against the top dogs? Well, looking at that 8-1 scoreline. Certainly feeling quite comfortable. And they're actually Ow. playing quite controlled on these defaults too. EDG leaving not just Kang Kang to watch over towards A, but multiple players. 
Was that just a spam through the smoke there? I mean, Benkai deleted. Next. And still pressure applied, but Gang Gang, I mean, this guy just creates diamonds. You try and force the issue. <laughs> and he just goes for more, doesn't he? Yeah, just relentless aggression. Willing to play confidently. Take the risks, why not? Even against that half fight. When you're looking at Kang Kang, Brent, he's the most active player of champions, right? That means he takes the most fights out of any player in the tournament. Number two is Jing. Number three is Forsaken. And Kang Kang is still so willing to take these kind of fights. Obviously, this is an anti-eco round, but we've seen it all match so far. Yeah. Honestly, it's what I was thinking out of all these teams as well. Which team is going to be most well equipped for dealing with the kind of fundamentals that Herbal Gaming love to have on display? It would have been Paper X in my mind. Yeah, I mean, Paper X, FBX, these kind of teams. But there's the fight, getting the better end out of Kan Kan as he goes for the wider swing with his attack operator. Perhaps this is the round where EDG might be getting a little overconfident. But listen, you can't, I can't blame them. They're 9-1 up currently. And the res brings Kan Kan back online anyway. Puts him Jim. back on the line. Well, that's going to be a push down for a two. Forsaken is dealt with. And there's never a hole in this default. At least not one that Paper X can find. They exist on the map for sure, but it feels like EDG have a great read on where Paper X's players are going to try and challenge. Yeah. Which Reposition. areas of the map they're prodding and poking. Bit of spam with the Vandal. Fearless. Fearless man. Yeah. And that's Haodong pinging out the position that Mind Freak is normally holding the smoke from. These players are learning <laughs> so quickly on the global stage. Contact plays on contact plays. This time is devised turn apparently to try and work his way through down into two, but again, just and about brushing each other's backs, aren't they? And the pit that's been used for Mind Freak, getting nothing. How long finding the timing on everybody through mid? Oh, apart, from, apart from diving. Apart from divide. But this is brought to a 3v2, where once again EDG have site control. And apart from a couple of rounds early on in the half, they've been able to manipulate these defenders so well to always being set up on the angles first. Intelligent from Mind Freak to be able to catch the one player out, but not quite. Edward Gaming not sleeping at the wheel, are they? The instantaneous trade, that is going to be the 10th round for them. Now Red. getting into this last round of the half here, Josh. I have not seen a half this dominant since map one of the grand finals where the team that won Copenhagen destroyed Paper X on bind. Yeah. And that at least, there's some logic behind it because Paper X's comp is very, you know, unidimensional, one dimensional on bind in some senses. It has to push you. This map, they're running a normal comp. EDG is just plowing them. You want to play, play, let's play. I'm trapped as well, cuts up those angles, knives and play on top of it. The drone to clear through. No on stranger to this one, obviously. On the other side of the map, Forsaken and Jing will not be deterred. Yes, They're pushing push. aggressively again, even though normally EDG have two players watching for this. Paper X are getting good information on the other side of the map. I will say, nobody is one away from his ult. Here. Or kill will do it. Now that Viper Fuel back up, it's going to be the snake bike drop down and an updraft play all the way up close and personal. Taking position into this. How long's pushing forwards? Pitching should not really be favored there. The fight's still being taken, but a nightfall on top of it, that's going to be pushing the players back and giving a bit of space now for Jing. They know that Jing's behind. And Forsaken being able to win the, the jet battle has given his team a massive advantage. Are EDG going to go through a double push through the smoke? Just a single tap from Haldong, trying to trigger out some kind of One response. But it's oh, Paper X with two <laughs> rounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's an honestly <sighs> dominant half, dominant finish here from Edward Gaming, despite the fact Paper X were able to get that last one under their belt. An absurd series of events. What are we going to be seeing here, Desk? Break us all down. Thank you very much, Bren. And a sideshow, what are we seeing here, Kilios? What are we seeing? It is the pure, <laughs> unadulterated chaos and madness that I was talking about. This is just absolutely wild plays coming through. But something that doesn't really shock me, the draft, that's what shocked me. 
I think that if you have Haven open, that is a map that you should willingly be picking against EDG. Everything else is a little bit more up in the air. Icebox is absolutely one that I would have strayed away from. They play this against Onslayers in the LCQ in East Asia, and again, nobody ace on Sova. He just does it again. It's incredible. And, yeah, and, and they're so good on this map, and that's despite the fact that they're playing with a substitute. They pull yes. Huggy in last second. He one for one fills the role, and he's been looking incredible here on Icebox. EDG have not skipped a beat in the coordination or in this guy's performance as an individual. Yeah, yeah. let's talk about Smoggy, because we expected life to be playing Jet on this map. But uh, Kilios, what have you made of his, uh, his role on Jet? So far from Smoggy, honestly, kind of across both maps is that he is playing serviceably for what his team needs. They don't need Smoggy to come in and have a life-esque performance. Everybody else on the team is so good to be able to pick up where there are some moments of slack, but they just needed him to be serviceable, and he is absolutely doing that and a little bit more on top. Yeah, and I mean, looking towards this second half now, no, don't be distracted no, that, by the that's my Phoenix. gift for to Benkai. That's from you. Yeah, that's from that's me. That's so sweet, but it's not sweet right now for the Paper X fans because it is looking grim for them. Only yeah. two rounds thus far. Their attacking side can struggle on this map sometimes. I think with the Fade, they're going to struggle to be able to counter out the operators on the other side. They're going up against a Jet and a Chamber Comp. EDG can throw aggression. They can hold with the ups. It's a really powerful defensive side. I don't really see a world bar some crazy Paper X magic where they can come back. Yes or no, do they come back into this? No. no. Okay, well, the Death says no, Side and Show and Brent. What do you guys think? It's going to take the pistol round, I think, to start things off for any sort of comeback on this map. It'll take the pistol round. I mean, if you think they're going to come back, you might be taking the pistol round as well. I, I, think, I think that we are set up here for a fantastic map three. Yeah. You know, as Achilleos is saying on the desk, Haven is... Haven is one of those maps that I would have also expected Paper X to go for, and Paper X have the advantage on. But who knows with this? I wasn't expecting Icebox to be this one sided. Yeah, honestly, would have said it on, I think, both of the maps that we've seen so far, but all that pressure that's being applied just through the choke point, that's going to force out the horns and the wall as well, portions of it being broken off. In fact, the killer already being found with yeah. Smoggy falling. There goes Smoggy. The pistol ace sub that EDG have brought in has been. Very cool Ooh. in these kind of rounds. Still trying to take it. Okay. And he divide just about being able to pick the second one. And this is what you're going to see from Edward Gaming is that they are not going to be afraid still to get straight into the action. Kills being found backwards, forwards, this way, that way, with the wall dropped Last up. Player standing. Going away across now, all up to Chichu. Still being watched off. But players are low yeah. enough here Fight that there planted. is a possibility. It's going to be that double face though that eventually shuts it down. And so the pistol round is a reality. Yeah, for EDG, I don't think you need to be doing anything crazy here, no force buy or anything like that. You have such a massive lead. But now, if you want to talk about the comeback being a possibility here, I mean, take a look at this as well. Smoggy's last official match, July, as a member of Weibo Gaming. So mm -hmm. he's, he's not normally a player for this team. That's the other part that I was talking about earlier. He's not somebody that's been in and out of EDG, a long time sub. He's somebody that they've got in at the last second for Istanbul and found fantastic success so far in this map, uh, in this match. Yeah. If we're going to talk, though, about the potential for a comeback during this, I hope, short technical point. <laughs> Listen, it had to happen at some point, Josh. It did, it did. Well, I'm glad it's here, <laughs> though. But the, the Paper X attacking side, in general, not specific to Icebox, but in general, is very good. It's one of the big areas that they have a massive advantage over EDG, usually, the attack side. But that's about delivering bonus rounds. That's about being able to manipulate EDG and get entry picks as well. A lot of those things have not really been going their way over the course of this entire series. And it was a short take pause. I knew oh, it. it was. Super good job. quick. Good job. You didn't curse it. <laughs> when you, as soon as you said that, I was like, why did you? <laughs> why did you? But listen, we're getting back into it. So these kind of rounds, a good opportunity to take a look at how EDG are defending. So it's a bit of a multi-purpose Viper Wall over on B that Hardong is throwing down. Playing fast and loose at the positioning though. Looks like they were already rotating a lot of the bodies over towards this one site. Can they try and take the fight? The answer is yes. That's going to be a trade. In fact, oh. another one just underneath belt. Just underneath the rafters, I should say. Still looking for a couple more with the pistols. The Jesus is just pistols. running and gunning, man. And Mind Freak, he didn't have a weapon until just now. It's done the Mind Freak. What a thrifty. 
And that has put the nail in the coffin, Brent. If, there was, if there was any hope of a comeback, it's gone now. <laughs> it's gone. I mean, just completely unexpected. You asked me to predict this match as well. Look at the skill involved here. I mean, EDG are never out of these kind of rounds. I love this as well, though, the, the play when they're on this, this eco round. Play fast and lose the positioning. Yeah. Chuck the bodies towards the site that you think that they're leaning towards. You know? Trade it out, try and play for it. And listen, a lot of teams do that. That's not, that's not specific to how EDG are playing. To me, it's the consistency of shots being hit that's absurd. Yeah. And the fact they're keeping it up, the winning the duels against one of the best teams we have in the world. There's Smoggy getting a bit too aggressive without support, however. Yeah, I think that's a bit of a showcase, honestly, of maybe the gap with life not playing. Because Smoggy was out in the open there. There was no one covering that belt angle. Oh, the Chichu does not play here. Well, the Horn spotted him and the Seize on top of it. Latches him in position and it's set up Forsaken beautifully. Two kills to open it up now. Uh-oh. Playing weed inside that Viper's Orb. And that could have been an opportunity had Haodong found, found two. But left the Gankai. Not gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, Paper X have another lifeline with which to play. EDG though is still gonna be able to buy up possibly into the next round. Uh, not great credits by any measure. Be but saving, right? Yeah. They yeah, they could go for something mad with a force buy where Kang Kang's using his headhunter bullets and stuff, but I think always the better option to play safe when you have such a lead. The, the opportunities are going to present themselves. However, good utility usage coming out from Benkai there to clear the Jenny position. Excellent entry in from Forsaken. And I think if there's any hope for comeback, the attacking first duels are going to be what decides it. Forsaken Jing need to be so sharp with their entries. And coming into this tournament, Brett, Kang Kang has been destroying first duels. Uh, this is absurd, but he's been winning two-thirds of his opening duels. No one else in the tournament comes even close. Most people are around 50%. Sure. He's every half Kang Kang averages a three to one KD in terms of first duels. Yeah. And no one else is close in the tournament. But the advantage of Paper X has is that they have Forsaken and Jing to try and take those back. They've been supported well. We saw yeah, Benkai's have. utility as well that that sets him up for supplemented the yeah. A push. You don't have to just go for the raw aim duels, of course you don't. Yeah, precisely. But Paper X are gonna be asked to do almost the impossible here in recovering seven rounds in a row on their attack side and making that timeline look like a joke by the end of it. That's why things might get a little bit more difficult as well. Obviously, the time might be taken for the next round. Every gaming are gonna be playing for this one. Two hero rifles. Bring them down. And a heavy presence in mid, actually, watching this one. It's going to be that clash, I think, a bit of a battle taking place. Yes, indeed. Straight through Chew, that's Smoggy. He's rattling off the shots. Jing going to be healed himself up as well. Flex another one for his troubles. Already can on the push, though. Hey, uh, oh, my goodness. Coverage needs to be in play. You don't want to be using that weapon. Yeah, good luck being able to execute the flank with the shorty now. Headhunter bullets expended. What? 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 Oh, no. right. what? I don't think Devai intended to go for that one. Yeah, that's uh, that's an unusual one. Still, they're going to be able to get space. Gains on to that A side, but they have handed over the weaponry, at least exchanged one here and there. Remaining. No more rifle taken out of the hands of him. No and it looks like a position where Jing should get punished, and he does Jing things again and cleans them both up. That's a wild round. But now EDG are going to have rifles back in their hands. I was curious, honestly, as well whether or not they were going to be trying to save a bit of their money as well, get the operators online on the defensive side, but no, just opting into the into the rifles being played. Yeah, Kang Kang ops a lot more than Devai or Forsaken on Paper X. Even if you combine Devai and Forsaken together, Kang Kang still uses the operator more than they do. Yeah. Uh, opting not for it in this case, but a tour de force out for Devai on the attack side you want to play, doesn't normally play, play these kind of situations too aggressively. More, lead, more just to support the rest of his team. But Devai has the spike heading towards A right now. So and it is face. such an aggro setup from EDG. So one face from EDG. Kanga takes the fight. Nobody's trying to bail him out, but at least there is the swing. Forsaken's able to trade it, but you never expect the follow-up. Smoggy's still up top on Bell. All the knives expended. Forsaken's just trying to get the hell out of there. Two players up. Jing, if he finds a kill, will have the res back online. Bodies all over the place. And Chichu on a fast flank. The angle. 
That tap of the rifle, repositioning, that's a spike drop down. That's a res, but that also gives time for Chichu to start working his way forwards and deny these bodies. Sorry, apologies, misreading that one. Thought that was Jing that we were watching, it's Forsaken, Still. of course. He's managed to grab this fight. He's not this fight, it's being taken! Bit of run and gun and play! Hold on, he forces the favorable fight, he doesn't go down. That's gonna be that 12th round here for Icebox. One more will do it. Yeah, EDG have just been... Uh, that defensive setup definitely bodes taking a look at again. They had an aggressive Viper smoke that Smoggy was inside of, yeah. and Smoggy is then able to swing out on belt Do not off that. the back of everyone else's aggression. That is such a good defensive setup for A aggression that I haven't seen other teams using. EDG bringing fresh ideas to the table at their first time at a global event. And they're just looking masterful. Dash to the side. That's the knives in play. Fearless. Impeccable crosshair placement from Smoggy. And absolutely fearless. I mean, just not worried about Forsaken running into him there at all. Just anticipating the wide swing as well. And that's a first death. Paper X cannot afford it. They need seven rounds in a row there. clean. The res, but it's so far out in the open. They're walling for you it. Oh! Breaks a portion. Back. Brutal! But the spam is there. There is going to be coverage in play. Yeah. Recon against the side. They heard the drop. Minefield's going to be closer towards me. It's going to be that double swing now. Paper X have to be clean with the fundamentals. Have to be clean with the gunplay. They are coming out at least on top of that one short engagement. There's still a minute left. They could pump the brakes if they wanted to, but it looks like they're opting to just try and take the fight right into the barrel of Kang Kang. And he's pushing back up, re-clearing into the position. Two of the players left standing. All of these liberties being taken. This could be it, the final blow. And it's just down to the singular player. Divai cannot stand up against it. Map number three is on the cards.